Hello friends, welcome back. Believe it or not, I have two videos for you in the month of January. Maybe more, we'll see. Um, today, we're going over some announcements in Pokemon Go. You know, uh, I, gotta, I gotta remind the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm that I exist. I gotta remind you that I exist. It took some time off. I gotta get those videos. Get the videos coming again. Back out more. Upload more is what I'm saying. I'll be uploading more after my little break there. Uh, today we're talking about some announcements in the world of Pokemon Go, starting with one that came out yesterday. February Community Day featuring Hopip. Trainers, we're excited to announce that Hopip, the cottonweed Pokemon, will be featured during February's Community Day event. So Saturday, February 12th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Hopip, and for the first time, shiny Hopip. The exclusive attack, acrobatics, a flying type move, which we don't know the stats on yet, um, but it should be moderately impactful uh, in PvP. It's not going to make Jumpluff an amazing raid attacker uh, for any reason. But PvP, there could be some applications there. 110 damage in trainer battles, 100 damage in gyms and raids, which doesn't really do anything for us until we know the energy cost. Because if it's 100 damage and it costs all the energy, that's not good. But if it's 100 damage and it costs very little energy, then that's good. This tells us nothing. We have the $1. $1, Bob. Uh, special research story, as we always do. Triple catch Stardust. I know a lot of people are excited about that. Incense will last for three hours. Lures will last for three hours. Snapshots. Uh, this is all standard stuff that we get for community day, community day now. But get up to three free raid passes from gyms during the event and up to two hours after the event. That's new. Chance for Skiploom to appear in parks alongside Hopip. That's new. And bonus Hopip XL candy caught from Skiploom, uh, from Skiploom caught in parks. That's new. So Niantic is testing these new these new bonuses uh i guess as a way to encourage people to gather in parks for community day um when community day first started 2018 it was pretty customary to go to a park with your community whatever the the hot spot was to play pokemon go in your community the biggest park in your city is where a lot of people would have their meetups for community day and I think, obviously, because of the pandemic, uh, the the way that Community Day is experienced by people and their Pokemon Go communities has shifted. Uh, and obviously, lately, in places where people are able to gather now, you just see less people playing Pokemon Go during Community Day. Um, like for Bulbasaur Community Day, we went out to Santa Monica Pier and didn't run into anyone else who was playing Pokemon Go. I mean, someone could have been playing Pokemon Go, but there was no... It wasn't obvious like it used to be. You know what I mean? So I think by doing this, by by giving bonus XL candies in parks, by having Skiploom appear in parks, um, Niantic is obviously trying to get people to start coming back together in parks, to start gathering in their communities again. So I, I do like that. I like that that's happening. Event bundles, uh, you know, we got the, the box, the community day box, and 30 free Ultra Balls, plus stickers. Now, um, Hopip, <laughs> I tweeted a tweet yesterday, this tweet right here, and all I did was, I, I just stated facts. I just stated facts that when Johto Tour tickets went on sale, there were 16 unreleased Gen 2 Shiny Pokemon. And now with this announcement, uh, as of the date that Johto Tour actually happens, there will be nine unreleased Johto Shiny Pokemon, Gen 2 Pokemon. Obviously, a lot of people had the... Uh, let's just get this out of here. A lot of people had the reaction like, why does it matter? It's not about the Shinies. Um, to which, you know, to an extent, I agree. 
shouldn't always be about the shinies. But you can't deny that for some people it is. And uh, Niantic knows that shiny Pokemon are a big factor in motivating people to play in events. That's why they trickle them out so slowly. That's why they only give us one new shiny per event because they know that a lot of people are going to play Pokemon Go during that event because they have a chance to get the new shiny. Um, it's very clear that Niantic understands that shinies are a big motivator. I don't think that that is really something that's up for debate um, based on the way that they release them uh, and promote them. And right. Do we agree here? I hope so. So when you announce uh, the Johto tour and say, all Gen 2 Pokemon will be shiny. All these Pokemon that have been in the game now since 2017 uh, for five years, the remaining ones, of which there were 16 at the time, they'll finally be able to be shiny. And some of them, such as Hopip, were even included um, in like the boosted shiny. So on Incense, the, you'll get certain Pokemon boosted or, or certain Pokemon will be appearing on incense. Hopip is one of them. Certain Pokemon will have boosted shiny rates, depending on which version you choose. Hopip was one of them for both versions for gold and silver version. Hopip is a boosted shiny. So if you're someone who let's say loves Hopip, loves shiny Hopip and December 7th, when you read that announcement, you go, Oh, finally, Shiny Hopip, something I've wanted for a long time, is going to be available. And if I buy this ticket, I have an increased chance of getting it. Um, I'm sure that that's a motivating factor for some people. And now, uh, now that a lot of people, I'm sure, have bought their tickets, now to get this announcement that, oh, that Pokemon that we advertised has a boosted shiny rate if you buy this ticket, well, two weeks before that uh that ticketed event it has a boosted shiny rate for free for everyone and it changes that boosted hop -ip during the johto tour from something that a lot of people were looking forward to to now post community today something that people are going to go oh god another hop -ip. the way that you know we feel about a lot of pokemon who have had community days where we've caught 10 20 30 shinies of that pokemon already um it just becomes kind of unexciting. It doesn't, it doesn't do the same thing for you as it does finding the first shiny. And it's not just Hopip. Shiny Hoot Hoot got released uh, with the New Year's event. Shiny Slugma got released earlier this month. And I, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I joked about this on stream at some point. Like, what if they just release all the Johto shinies in events leading up to it? I don't know. But they're kind of they're kind of doing that. And again, I know I know that a lot of people will make the argument that shinies aren't the uh, the the thing, right? Shinies aren't a measure of success. Shinies aren't the only thing that's happening during the event. But again, I, I really think it's hard to deny that for a lot of people, they are a big factor and that Niantic understands that they're a big factor. So I just don't. I mean, I'm sure you're tired of hearing things that I don't like about Pokemon Go, but I don't like that Niantic advertised all these sh unreleased shinies will be available and then started trickling them out during free events after having already used them as kind of a marketing tool for a ticketed event. I hope that makes sense. Just for the sake of analogies to to really hammer it home um using let's use a concert as an example because you know if you're like me you may have noticed when we were young uh with all the emo bands playing so imagine imagine a concert and the concert promoter goes uh we're having this huge concert and so many bands let's say there's bands that you really like but you've never been able to see them live because they haven't toured maybe they haven't toured ever Maybe they've never played a live show. Maybe they haven't played a live show in 10 years, whatever it is. Let's say that you're excited to see these bands, that, that this concert comes out, this concert lineup comes out, 
and you go pierce the veil, Seosin, sleeping with sirens. And obviously I know they've toured before, but let's let's pretend that these bands have never played a show before. They've never toured before. You love their music. You've been listening to it for a long time. Seosin's playing their first show. Pierce the Veil's playing their first show. And it's at this huge concert. So you buy a ticket because you're excited to see them. And then after you've bought your ticket, before that big concert, the same concert promoter announces here's a, a free Seosin concert. Seosin's playing at this show and it's free. And then the next weekend, Pierce the Veil's playing at this show and it's free. How would, how would you feel in that situation? Does that make sense? Kind of a loose analogy. Does it, does it matter? I don't know. Have I made my point? I'm not sure. Opip Community Day <laughs> is coming on February 12th. Let me know how you feel about it. I know a lot of people disagree, but hey, I'm just I'm here to share my opinion. It is my channel after all. All right, enough of uh, of the the Jodo stuff. Enough with the hopip. Enough with the concerts. Who is going to when we were young? I didn't buy a ticket. Anyway, uh, let's get to some new announcements. February, the February content update. For Pokemon Go, obviously we have Pokemon Go Tour Johto. Just talked about it a lot. February 26th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, trainers who purchase a ticket prior to February 10th will also receive access to the Season of Heritage's timed research for February. Yep, buy it, buy it soon or you're missing out. That's not me saying that. That's Niantic saying that. Um, February Community Day, we have Hopip. We just went over that. Then, here's what's new. Uh, from Tuesday, February 1st until March 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific time, the research breakthrough encounter for February is Esper, and Shiny Esper will be released for the first time in Pokemon Go. A new Shiny. Shiny Esper, and Esper will be in uh, the research breakthrough. The following Pokemon will be in raids. Regirock and Registeel will be returning to five-star raids this February, no surprise there. And we're also excited to announce that Deoxys will be returning to raids. And that's not all. For the first time ever, you'll be able to encounter shiny normal form Deoxys, shiny attack form Deoxys, shiny defense form Deoxys, and shiny speed form Deoxys. In celebration from Wednesday, February 16th to uh, March 1st, 2022, you'll be able to receive up to two free raid passes per day from spinning gym photo discs. So Niantic's really pushing these like free uh, raid passes. I think they're trying to get people to go out and raid in person. You know, we all kind of have been relying on the remote raid passes for a while. So they want us back out there. Uh, so from February 1st to February 9th, we have Reggie rock in raids from February 9th to 16th. It's Reggie steel from February 16th to 19th. Normal form Deoxys from February 19th to 22nd, attack form Deoxys from 22nd to the 25th. It's defense form Deoxys, which is honestly, I think the only one that's really all that useful in Pokemon Go. Uh, in PvP, it's very good in PvP. And from February 25th to March 1st, speed form Deoxys. All of those will be shiny. Then during a uh, Johto tour on February 26th, Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Lugia, and Ho-Oh. In Mega Raids, Mega Ampharos and Mega Houndoom will be appearing. That's, those are, neither of those are new. Raid Hours, February 2nd, Reggie Rock. February 9th, Reggie Steel. February 16th, Normal Form Deoxys. February 23rd, Defense Form Deoxys. So Speed Form and Attack Form are not getting their own Raid Hour. But defense form is, and again, like I said, I think that's the only one that's like good for anything in Pokemon Go. Sorry, other forms of Deoxys, we just like, we don't use them. We don't use them. Uh, spotlight hours. February 1st, we have Litleo Spotlight Hour with double catch XP, which I really need because I'm... <laughs> <clears throat> Litleo, I need that double XP because now I'm racing Adam and there's actually stakes this time. I don't. I really, I really don't want to go to Disneyland, I'll be honest with you. February 8th, Spritzy with Double Catch Stardust. February 15th, Coughing, again with Double Catch XP. I'm not very good at hitting excellent throws on Coughing. 
Uh, and then February 22nd, Voltorb with Double Catch Candy. And then we have these upcoming events. Lunar New Year, ring in the Lunar New Year from Tuesday, February 1st uh, until Monday, February 7th. It is the year of the tiger, so we'll probably see Growlithe in the event. Litleo's a lion, but like it's getting spotlight hour on February 1st, the first day of that event. Maybe we'll see shiny Litleo release during that event. Hopefully. Valentine's Day event from Thursday, February 10th to Monday, February 14th. Trainers can celebrate Valentine's Day with an in-game, with in-game events and activities, an evolutionary line of fairy type Pokemon. We'll even make its Pokemon Go debut. New fairy types coming. Uh, and then the Go Tour Johto lead up event from Friday, February 18th to Friday, February 25th. Get ready for Pokemon Go Tour Johto with a Pokeball focused event. Cool. In case you need to stock up. That's it. That's what's going on in February, as far as we know. More details to come on those events. Let me know how you feel down in the comments. Um, yeah. Looking forward to hearing your opinion now that I've said a lot more about Hopip and how I feel about it. Thanks for watching. I'm a little nervous for the comments. We'll see. Bye.